Wholeness and Balanced Vibrations family, thank you so much for taking the opportunity to dive in this, this day, this special day that we call Tribe Vibes. We are set to have a very, very special evening. I wanted to give um, the time and the opportunity for everyone to dial into the space. As we know, you know, there's a lot happening. And when you come in right now, you have to give yourself time or you get to give yourself time and an opportunity to dial into something harmonic, something full spectrum, and something that's going to feed your soul the necessary nourishment for the continuous process of your growth. All things is growth for the soul. So this is how we do it this evening on Tri Vibes, which is again, a special event, is we send this vibration out into the galaxy because we know that not only does the galaxy exist within, but because of this perfect alignment of self, we've been able to bring ourselves into harmony with others and to really see our commonalities and begin to really nourish each other in this experience by edification or reflection, being able to see someone that is in the exact space time as you and may even have traverse, you know, some other spaces and able to give you some pointers. We have a system of mastery etiology on deck. We have our own social network at Secret Energy. We have our adept training inside of the university. So these are the results of the fun and work that we do with each other. And this is our 12th year. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, if this is your first evening inside of Tri Vibes Wholeness, we love to see you here. Also, we respect all the pillars who have also been in the space for years. But if this is your first time, I will ask that you type number one inside the chat. And also we are broadcasting live to YouTube this evening. As you know, from time to time, we share the love in that space. We've been on this sovereignty series and it's been strong. We even took, I wouldn't say a break because it was more like a continuum, but we did do a deep dive. And as I've mentioned to everyone that has been following this sovereignty series on YouTube, that you can still find this series and even the videos that haven't been uploaded uh, inside the university. So that secret energy, hit the right tab, go to the university, and that is a free course there because sovereignty has been the big buzzword uh, over the last, well, it's been now at least a year for the overall conscious community. Many have been engaging in that since from the jump, but it is now starting to trend. So you're seeing it in commercials and you're seeing people, I want to be sovereign. So we decided that we take a moment through divine ordination and actually define what sovereignty is through the codices, meaning from what sovereignty was stated to be for the beings that have existed in this planetary system uh, before us. And so we're gonna get this started though by giving it a wholeness and sending it around the world. Uh, so that means that you will have the opportunity if you choose to unmute your mic and say wholeness. Now, the reason why we do this again is because this is a song that's in unison across the cosmos. So even if you're not on this line, definitely type in, let us know where you're at and uh, send the wholeness across the space. I guess I'll start it. I'm Seven Bomar. I'm here in Costa Rica right now, student of the cosmos and the galaxy wholeness. It's glad I'm glad to be here with you. And yeah, let's go ahead and get this train moving this evening. Mm -hmm. Wholeness, brother Seven. This is Sean in Los Angeles. Excited to be present in wholeness, fam. Wholeness, Sean. This is Rukia in St. Louis, wholeness tribe. Oh, oh, Rukia. Rukia. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, this is Aziza in Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks, Destin. Most definitely. Uh, this is Destin in Port Jervis. Aziza, I got your back. Uh, and fortunate and glad and joyful and infinite to be here. Thomas. Wholeness Dustin, this is Billy in Miami. Grateful to you and the family. Wholeness. Wholeness Billy, this is Drake from New York. Looking forward to tonight. Love you all, family. Wholeness Billy, wholeness Drake. 
Nade is from Costa Rica, sending home as to everyone. Hello, Miss Nadege. This is Crystal in Atlanta, Georgia. Hello, Miss Crystal. Crystal. <laughs> Hello, Miss Crystal. This is Anne in San Diego. Hello, Miss. I'm just going to jump in. I'm in Greenville, South Carolina. It's Maria. Hello, Miss, everyone. Holness Maria, this is Seclinda, currently docked in Oklahoma. Holness Seclinda, this is Michael in West Palm Beach, Florida. Hi, Michael, this is Jody from Australia, Gold Coast, Holness Tribe. Glad to be here. Holness Jody. It's John Tay in Boston, Massachusetts. Holiness, John Tay. This is Jeremy over in Stone Mountain. Holiness family. Holiness, Jeremy. This is Adam from Rockford, Illinois. Holiness, Adam. This is Adam from Ontario, Canada. Hello, Miss Adam. This is Tara from Baltimore, Maryland. This is Marcia from Fort Collins, Colorado. This is Nelson Perez, Columbus, Ohio. Hey, Nelson Perez, it's Michelle from Sarasota, rocking the fro, holding this chart. Holness, Michelle, it's Mary, dive into this cosmic oasis, <laughs> ending up unity all over Iowa. <laughs> Hey, Tribe Holness, this is Eddie. Hey, this is, um, this is Elia. <laughs> From San Diego, Holness. Holness, Eddie. This is Sammy from Surfside, Texas, and Julie. Holness, Sammy and Julie from Nashville. Holness Kawanda, Holness Tribe. This is Shucks out in Tokyo, Japan. Just starting the morning over here. Hope you all are having a very good evening. Holness. Holness Shucks, this is Dominic. Claudia. And the Big Apple. Holness Dominic. Yo, family, this is that boy Blake coming to you from Texas over here burning that tree resin. Brian Slab. All aboard. Hold on now. There's somebody special out there. They sleeping on the mute button. I'm giving you an opportunity. It's October 1st. Turn up like it's you got to turn up and show up for yourself. If you're out there, you want to add yourself to the crescendo of beauty that you experience here. Say wholeness, please. Yeah, a wholeness uh, trap. Good to be here with you. Um, seven, let's, let's take off on them. Like, I'm really ready. So all the newcomers, uh, enjoy. Y'all ain't for a treat and Let's do this thing. Bonus, y'all. Let's go. 
Honus Tribe is Chris from oh, St. Louis. Uh huh. Oh, Miss Christopher, this is Michelle in Michigan. Happy to be here with everyone. Love y'all tribe. Oh, this is Michelle. This is IJ from Colorado. Love you tribe. Honus, RJ, this is Chrissy Bear from East Los Angeles. Honus. Honus, Chrissy, this is Sarah from Baton Rouge. Honus, Rob. Holding the Sarah, this is Chris from Boston. I love that image, Chris. All right, so let's go ahead and go in. Wow. Let's see how many number ones we have in the chat this evening that will help me uh, be able to guide this experience this evening. It's going to be actually a visual experience inside of your mind's eye. So that means you'll have the opportunity even now to recline a bit, to take a few breaths. Breath is so important. Just breathe in because if you don't breathe, then you're not here. <laughs> if you just, you know, you stop breathing for too long, you're going to another place. So take a take a few breaths. Fools rush in, you know, realize that you've made it by sheer resonance alone. Excuse me, I muted my own line. By sheer resonance alone. If you're in the space, this means that you have aligned yourself with a resonance that is all seeing and all knowing. This is a complete spectrum. It's very rare, very difficult to accomplish with the human counterparts, I will say. But things that we use every day in everyday life, well, I guess the height of that would be the sun. There is also your vehicles, which you start up every morning and you turn on. There's components to those vehicles. And if those components are not functioning, the car doesn't turn on. And that really, really brings us to the first point in all of this, which is that you're going to, you're going to have to do the work. There's a, there's a great reward to the work, but you're going to have to do it and you're going to have to make a decision to do it now. So obviously this conversation is not necessarily for those who feel that they're already doing it, but those who are always are looking into how it should be done. And that's where I'm at. I'm constantly bringing myself into alignment and balance. It's been a mighty journey. Let's just say public. It's been 12 years of metaphysics and really looking into the deepest mysteries of life with an intention to merge it all together and to unify. And so also we let everybody know that it's probably a good idea to have your Palo Santo and your Sage on deck. <laughs> it assists in moving the space. If you don't have any today, then you have a mission for yourself. You may wanna put it on your to-do list cause you'd be surprised how it just doesn't seem important to you end up back at Tribe Vibes again with it, without it. You know, maybe you get some grass from outside next time, at least then and just be like, look, you know, I didn't like the way that grass, that dry grass smelled. So let me go ahead and uh, make my trip and get something that assists me here in this process of being more in tune with myself and putting myself in the position that I need to be in in order to grow. Because every every aspect of us is very similar to a tree. But we're also kind of in this plant phase, right? And the plant is going to need certain things in order to grow. It's going to need the sunlight. It's going to need water. And as we go into this deep dive today and begin to truly, truly see into 
the element of water and the element uh, of heat, fire, and, and these kind of forces, it gives us once again another opportunity to look through the blueprint and see exactly what's going on, how it's put together, and what you need to do to get yourself to a level where you don't feel the fear and you don't take death as any type of force that you need to be concerned about because what you've discovered in yourself and that's ability to exist within a continuum. So the reason why I said you need to do this now though is that to be able to control your ship inside of what you're experiencing rather than letting something else control it for you, boarding your vessel, if you may, pirates, if you may, you know, these are these are ships that we're actually in and being able to set up as we know, as we talk about customs on your ports is indeed a situation that you have to get to, because even externally, as you can see, they're definitely checking the ports a bit more. You know, you're trying to go and travel. You know, they have they have criteria that they want you to follow in order to enjoy those benefits. And so it's time to get in tune with self because you have all of what you need from the ex or what you think you need from the external reality you have it all you can fly you can go anywhere you want you can you are infinitely abundant and if you can't see that then tonight is your night because you'll be able to see it so clear it may move you to action so that's Really, my only responsibility here is to make it as clear as possible for you so that you move to action. I, I can't move to action for you. Um, if you notice, maybe by the look on my face that I'm extremely happy, I'm calm being here in the space with tribe. And that is a big product of doing the work. I'm not always like this. Every day is the, the, the wind is different, the waves, the moon, the star, every single thing that interacts on us is in a different position and feeling a different way. So I have to step in every single day looking to mediate all of the energies that are flowing through me, just as you every single day should do the same if you wanted to get the most optimal benefit of this journey. So you're gliding through the universe, this is the university. Your parents put you here because you have something to learn. And most importantly, it's how to guide this vehicle, how to drive this vehicle that you're in. And being able to take off the governors, which you're calling your senses, they're the perception, sight, hearing, taste, smell, touch, being able to, to take those off, off or dole out their effects gives you mastery over that specific element. And in that, you, uh, you peer deeper into a reality that is actually nothing, meaning nothing is everything. So in this process, you get an opportunity to start seeing the lenses removed so you can really fathom self, right? So you're like unfathomable. We don't know where the first thing came from. So what you are is something that it, it can't be figured out. So that's that's feared for sure. And it strikes fear in other people who have adapted to fear. Now, on the planet, just to be very clear, because fear is fire. We, that's really almost one of our initiators. Fire causes pain. Pain is a payment. So this means that when you come out of line, you know, you get hit with this fire and then now you feel this pain. Now you got to make this payment. And then generally you learn this lesson. It's like some of the toughest lessons, right? And from that point, you probably shouldn't put your hand in fire again to and have it burn you. And you should actually even learn how to deal with fire. So this is like anything coming from that element, you begin to learn how to deal with in order to prevent the pain or the payment that you have to make every time you do some damage or you come out of alignment. Now, look, this is like a vessel. So if you crash into something in the galaxy, now you got to pay for it. And if you don't have insurance and you're already indigent, then something's got to move in and basically begin to extract that energy from you that 
you did damage that that uh, that replenishes what you did damage to. So there's nothing here that you see in this world with this system that doesn't exist in this place you're calling the cosmos. It's just refined. And because of that, the depth learns how to associate what is happening here with what is happening in the all. So again, a visual experience in your mind's eye. So that means you should take a breath because I don't intend to go fast through what I have to, to build on this evening. In fact, I'm not sure of the, the body of work as far as how long this will last. Maybe we'll have a runtime of about an hour and a half. <laughs> but with that, there's the necessity of it just being very clear. So it doesn't need to be fast. It doesn't need to be, you know, we don't have to have pictures. We don't have to have uh, fireworks. We will have some beats later on, though. But in every tense, this should be something that you dial into and just see for yourself, observe. You don't got to make any judgments. You don't got to go and serve nobody's God tonight. You know, there's only just you in observation and even be in observation of yourself, just like the Vipassana, like find out where that itch is and turn that off. Like realize within yourself what is causing a lot of this this blockage, because if you're experiencing anything right now close to fear and you have death around you and you're worried about it, this is for you this evening. But remember, you came into the space like that. So you have to you have to get on the ball here. You got to do the work in order to actually, you know, you need to get busy now. So just remember, I'm giving you that even as a disclaimer, like, hey, don't play around right now. There's not much more time. Don't don't be just being lazy with it. You know what needs to be done. And this is going to be why you should do it. And then that should just be the confirmation that you're right on time. But if you go forward from here and it's still the same old thing and you still have problems like fear and then you are worried about death, it means that you, you need to revisit yourself. You need to come into yourself. You need to actually commit to the tutelage. Go through a process. Watch something, listen to it, follow the instructions and go through with it so that you can see the results. Because again, I'm here to tell you, while all this stuff is happening beyond the stress of the beloved, I'm in good condition. Great. I don't feel as if everything is ending. I don't feel as if I'm being forced to do something and I'm worried. And that's a product, though, of all of the things that I've had to do to myself to bring myself into alignment. Now, I'm still a book and in fact, an open book, a tree. And in that respect, that means that if you read this book, you will gain everything that I may have spent thousands of lifetimes trying to learn, beat my head against the wall and the whole nine, just going through the process, learning for learning lessons and paying for it. <laughs> right. And then also having to dissolve the debt of the damage, you know, because we are in these vehicles and they are indeed magnificent. So you can imagine to damage one, how much it may cost to repair it. So this, what is fear and what is death and what would the agents be that could overcome it? What would they be like? That's, that's a very simple question. So we know that if someone has a fear, generally, if they feel like they have some level of protection and they feel stronger than the things that they fear, fear does not have a hold on them. So if you have a lot of power and you have a lot of energy and a lot of awareness and wisdom, this is what's pushing fear completely out of the way because you have resources and you have different things that you can draw upon, including your breath, to dissolve any levels of fear, right? So we can automatically identify that something that's going to overcome fear is something that would be inside of you that allowed you to feel invincible, okay? Now, there have been times that there have been people that have faced what would have been, I guess, let's say in this case, like they may have went into something and perished into that and never in their mind at one point did they have fear of it at all. 
This is actually the development of the being. Like when you can get to the state of being fearless or having fearlessness instilled inside of you, what it is is that it allows you to even view life different. It's a, it's a deep level of maturity. It actually allow, it opens up your, your range. It opens up the potential of what you can do. And we know this because as you get older, fear seems to creep in. It's like a brittle thing. So as the fear starts creeping in, you go less places, you do less things that have maybe some danger involved. You know what I mean? You don't drive as fast anymore. So the, there's all these things that start happening. And that's just on the basic level. But symbolically, what that is, is that the, the uh, framework is getting smaller and smaller. So fearlessness actually increases your range. So the next thing here is just directly death. This procedure that we go through to transfer into another space. And because it's going to happen to anyone, it is the big elephant in the room. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's not something that we want to think about. It's going to happen to every person. They're going to leave here and then end up somewhere else. They end up somewhere else most people are not concerned about because they're just like, no, I'm never going to leave. Um, and I just don't want to think about it. I don't want to talk about it. And to me, that's actually the root to immaturity is when there's something that you need to address, but you just keep putting it off and keep putting it off, it's proving that it's it's too strong for you, that it's it's older than you, that it's it's deeper than than where you've gone yet. So you could see where you would be if you went through a procedure and no longer did you fear or no longer did you think of death as having a hold on you. Now that you can that, that you can imagine that in your image nation, you can visualize that. Now you can see why a person that's like that or being that's like that in this society right now. You could see how <laughs> that could that could pose some challenges if there's too many of those kind of beings. So, indeed, for thousands of years there has been an agenda to just make sure that the beings here don't become aware of who and what they are because it makes them not fear anything and then death does not hold any have any hold on them and so death is like a it's, it's almost like a it's like a film it's like an intermission it's like an elevator within itself. So it's like either you go through, this is what happens when have many who've experienced different forms of dying. <laughs> you either let go and go through or you stay. You know, sometimes you just get pulled into the other space, but it's just like, if you could still try to hold on here, you're just having a terrible experience because you're so afraid that where you're going is going to be the end of you. You know, yet there's no end and there's no beginning. And this starts because we see others leave. And then like even others that we care about, like I used to have, you know, a friend, you know, he sat right next to me and now he's gone. You know, I remember we used to joke and stuff like that. He used to carry this little Bible with him. It was just weird. And then now he's gone. And I mean, that was younger. And when I was younger, and like in my 20s, you know, I, I think about this guy and like how he was gone. And that would serve to perpetuate my, yep, that's why we need to figure out what's going to happen when we die. And I realized later on in life that what it really was is that the communication had been severed. And that produces this level of loneliness where we miss the person. And actually, a lot of this build was uh, inspired off of a continuous revelation about what was still the safe way to contact the ancestors, a.k.a. the dead, uh, beyond necromancy and Goetia, which is uh, clearly perilous. And what came to mind was the dream world and how oftentimes I've heard directly from some of my brothers uh, that their fathers who may have left came to them in their dream and inspired them. And it was like they were there and, you know, in 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 even when they had to come back into this world, it was like a, a goodbye, but it was like, nah, it's not a goodbye. It's just to be aware that when you get to this space, then I'll be here. 
and just how the lucid dreamer, the potential is endless. And actually, I, I dived into another layer of lucid dreaming and the hypnagogic state and implementations on how to get oneself into that, that plane and uh, even technologies that are capable of doing that with frequency. So I just I went through this whole thing. And but still, it wasn't enough for me because the question even came up uh, from our sister, Vrienda, who was chiming in about how in a recording I mentioned that, yeah, if somebody leaves and you never got in tune with their soul, the actual soul of the person, then it would be very difficult to continue to communicate with them because probably what you had got familiar with was not even them. And this is a product of Klippoth. It's a product of a shell that builds up over the consciousness based on fake illusionary realities that lack, they, they say lackluster. So they don't have a shine, a much of a shine to them. So it can kind of dim you out. And then in that dimming, you kind of become distorted. And then the being that you start living as is not really you. And then you introduce this being to another person. And then they start communicating with that being. They grow to love that being. And then that person passes on. But there's like almost no connection. So, you know, just for the record, I did finally uh, come up with a solution to the riddle. And it also came from something our sister Patricia was saying that was a technique that was practiced in their community 20 or 30 years ago, and it was staring in the eyes of a person that you really intended to meet their soul, because the eyes indeed that you see in the sky as the stars are actually those who have been here before and shall return again, according to the symbolism. And, uh, and it, it, it brings awareness that all of those stars are actually eyes. And just why you'd be looking up there like, ah, oh, the stars is because they're looking at you and they're remembering. And so to dive into this, we have to realize then that we have been steeped in a realm that has been fighting over the power over fear and death as a weapon, not as a, a deliverer. So notice how they, they also come, seem, they seem to come hand in hand, the thing that can deliver you and the thing that can imprison you. It's like that this is what the ancients learned about somewhat of this dualistic nature to the reality, but they, see, they saw that as a benefit because it actually allowed them to understand the extent of the, the existence of this creation, right? So there's fighting over this ability for a person to be fearless, and this, this essence that allows them to be fearless and then fearing a person who does not fear death. It's almost like a chain of command. Like if you don't fear death, everybody that fears death is below you. So it's just like right away, you get the instant upgrade and, it, and it's something that's pronounced. That's also what I wanted to make sure is very clear in this build today is that you may see these things that you need to do sometimes as intangible. How could you know me just not tripping every day and losing a lot of my energy on beefing with, with polarities benefit me right now. I need money. And you're just like looking for this tangible thing to happen in the reality and not realizing the power of the intangible or that the dream body is seven times more stronger than the physical body. It proves that because it cannot suffer death. You'd be dying in the dream and get back up. You Kung Fu and I'm <laughs> flying on the body here. There's things you do in the dream that you cannot do in this reality, yet this reality is yet but another aspect of the dream itself. But you plug into this reality with your body. So when you leave in the sleep and when, you, when, you're, when your clock changes or your body changes shift and you go into what is called the underworld, which is the ocean, this is the fish side of the soul, the dag. When it goes into the ocean, then at, at that moment, you're detached from the physical body, but tethered. Just like an astronaut on the tether, just like a child with the umbilical cord. So you're tethered to it, but you're in another vehicle. And so when you come back through this pipeline, because everything is pipes, look at your body, look at the intestines, look at the ear canal, look at the nose. The whole experience is just going through tubes. <laughs> like look at every single thing about life is like a tube. Even the phallus symbol is a tube. Even the womb is like a, a, a tube. So th these are tubes, 
right? And then you're you're going through all of these 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 different realms and these portals. And so coming into this world, you plug back into this, which we call a Lord Governor. It's a pentagram. It has governance through five senses, which is becomes the perception of the reality. It becomes also sight, hearing, taste, smell, touch, right? It becomes north, east, south, west, center. It becomes uh, quite a few different things that triangulate themselves into five in order to create a perception and to create a reality. So just realize, though, because in this space time, because I'm sure we we move through space time, like even when you finally leave this space, I'm sure you're going to be at the level of picking the most optimal space time for you to arrive in. It's like, yo, I just may just do all climaxes for the next 90 million parsecs. Like I just arrive at the climax of the situation then, you know, because of the perception and the level of awareness. But this is this is what's in, in front of you and around you. This is the potential of what we're talking about and beyond because you have your own uniqueness. So I may be describing something that may be exciting to me. But from this algorithm and from this blueprint, you'll be able to dial into something that is just for you. But I do find that many of our, 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 our needs, wants, desires happen to be the same, you know, because we've all come from this mother. So I will have to say again that just that awareness that they're beefing over this, this power of resurrection. Like if you could resurrect yourself, right, with full consciousness, like what is death to that kind of being? Right. They're 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 having issues with a full light, a full blown light spectrum. It's like, how am I fearing you? I can pass right through the pore of what you are. I can go to the essence of the fear that you have and deactivate it. How am I fear? like if anything, you're making me laugh with these notions of fear and death. Actually, you're reaching a bit and I'm seeing that your matrix is a bit. I, I can see the holes in your matrix, meaning when someone's trying to build a world inside of a world and they don't complete it or it's distorted, it's even it's easy to see the cracks in it. <laughs> so it's like I can't really buy into that whole thing you got going on with fear and death because your other stuff and what you built is uh, a little shaky and I can see through it. And I'm, I'm explaining what I mean by that. So first things first, and here in a moment, first things first is I can see why those who have deep wisdom and knowledge are on their way to having deep wisdom and knowledge. I'll say it like that, right? Because I think we should take words and, and, and we make wisdom the, the massive synthesis of all of this knowledge that we're getting. We say, well, that's wisdom. So we'll say those that have a large amount of knowledge, I can see how this, this awareness of what's happening here, the powers and the energies that are moving around, it could throw you. It could have you always needing to create a contrast or antithesis in order to define the experience. And then you would just try to jump on what you would call the side of the good team. And I'm going to explain why that happens, because this is the result of the split. I explained before that the sheer fact that you have men and women is proof that, and, and when they come together that they create life, it's proof that there's a life that exists where the women, woman and man are not separated. In fact, that seems to be only a product of physical worlds where you get things separated. And we already decoded that. We talked about that the world is a womb and only the womb has the ability to divide flesh from spirit to actually bring a being into a physical incarnation but in doing that it puts part of your consciousness over here and part of your consciousness over there to fuel the actual vessel so this becomes very interesting because for the life that you live the perception tries to feed you now because the beings are not coming out androgynous, human beings are not coming out androgynous, it tries to feed you that you have half of the power. And this is why it's so important to manifest from beyond this space, because inside of this space, everything is, is very dualistic. This is Beth, or two, also known as the house. 
This is the place that God lives. This is inside of the womb. This is the baby inside of the mother, if you may, but ruling from the egg, meaning just because you are inside an incubation says nothing about how much power you have because there are beings that are in incubation and ruling from that space, meaning that the baby tucked up, curled up in the womb with the thumb in the mouth is already in another world, living another life, another experience. And this nine months, which is a very, very interesting number, this nine months that this child is spinning inside of this matrix, spinning literally inside of this matrix is literally thousands of years where the being is at. And this is how we're moving through. This is how we're traveling. This is the level of power and ability in which we've already obtained. And it's just like, you know, it's just got to go down, you know, iPhone 13 out. You know, this level of power is being looked over because there's a distraction. And we're going to talk about that. But just realize this result of the split is also very similar to, as I said, if you wanted to perform this in a laboratory, you would take a spheric magnet and you would throw it at the wall and crack it into two pieces. And what you would find is as you try to put the magnet back together, that the sights would repel and the thing would flip over to the other side. It would be like you were trying to put two things back together that naturally fit together perfectly, but they would be fighting their way apart because they were broke. I want to make this very clear again. You need to do this yourself if you don't understand how this works. When you break a circular magnet or, or a spheric magnet, it does not just snap back into place when you put the parts back together. It, it starts to repel. And only with a certain level of energy, you got to have a basically an energy of fusion to be able to weave, weave the pole on every single one of those points that actually frayed out. So I, I want to make this very clear because we're electromagnetic beings and it should be very clear to you. How do you get polarized? How do you become a male or a female? And in that split, what happens then in that split? It's like even what they're saying with God, all of a sudden you start seeing an image of yourself <laughs> and a likeness of yourself. But really the deep part is that you start reasoning and then you're talking to yourself as a being that anything that they say, in this case, it's a think, it's a thinking, anything you think manifests because you're inside of a mind. So this is, this is life. This is the preliminary aspects to life and what I call the elevator and what goes on there and the transference of the souls, right? So the result of the split creates this dualistic thing. And this is why that's what's throwing everybody. They look at the mysteries, but they're beefing. They, they fight over the mysteries. They, this is the big God over here. And then this one, they hate that one. Then they're lying. They got codes, secrets, and they're doing all that because the power over death and the power over fear is what is, the, you know, that's a weapon in their world. It's like, man, that's, that could destroy us. It'd be like somebody, it'd be like the, the hotel fake matrix light would be on and nobody would come and stay there because they wouldn't want to deal with the terms. It will force the matrix itself to bring itself into balance with the original matrix. And I'm going to explain that because a matrix is a matrix. It's a womb. It's a lattice work. It's like a web, right? Stretched out over the abyss, which is a light web of DNA. This is real stuff. So your DNA is lights and it's all the memories and it spans out and basically floats in a chasm that has no beginning and no end. And in this, there are worlds within worlds. There is a blueprint. And then there are things that are built with the blueprint, right? So I'll say here then, imagine then if, if there's not a dualistic. So let me show you what the dualistic perception does to, to consciousness and true, pure what you would say is spirituality. You would get this father versus son and mother versus father thing happening. You would get where you would even have these ideas of a patriarch and a matriarch. <laughs> oh yeah, and then the patriarch took over and they, you know, they, they, they took over the women and that's the why the world is all messed up. So this is like, this is your explanation? Duality. 
So we and, and then the father, oh, yeah, the father was ruling. And but then, you know, the father became corrupted and his son, Luke Skywalker, took over and started ruling a whole nother nation. And when, you know, and then everybody, you see what I mean? So it's just like, what, what is, is this, are you guessing or is that how things really are? Do you know? Have you been to the space to be able to see all of this? So that's what knowledge and that's what knowledge and wisdom brings us is it allows us to answer those questions and to be to be able to answer them so exact that you'll see replicas of the same thing that you've learned. And so it'll be a confirmation because you'll see lots of other stuff that work the same way. My wisdom is built on things that I can see across thousands of other different types of life forms and different forms of existence and different situations, but the same occurrences. Because I, once I start realizing that that's how things work, I just started searching for the algorithm. I was no longer concerned about the story all the time, even though we're storytelling people. So we love to sit in for a good story. But I, I needed to separate story from lies. Because I talked about this before. I talked about how uh, this was last week. Again, you can catch this one in the university now. But I, I, I discussed, you know, very briefly uh, how... When you look at a skyscraper, because a skyscraper is a, is, is a corp, it's a body, it's actually a physical manifestation of a titan, it's a skyscraper, right? So there's a logo or a logos, there's an identity, an entity is formed, there's a corp, which is a body, people are put inside, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a structure, which is the skeleton, there is the penthouse, which is the pentagram, the pineal gland, who's on top, the boss. And, and so I explained again for everyone how the whole building is actually a replica of the body, we, but then in respect to the basement. We talked about the basement and how that often gets left out. And if somebody is removing your basement, which is basically your, your history, then they're, debase, they're debasing you. So then you have no basement and a big building with no basement just falls over. So I elaborated deep about how this building was connected. Uh, it could show us again another example of, of how we are and, and how we function. And just give me a minute because I, I'll come back to my point in that. I'm, I want to stay on my notes here and I'll come back to that in a minute. You know, anybody who's seen the bills before, they're kind of used to this. Like, wait a minute, you was, there was something there. We, we'll come back to it. So, it, but it's very important we stay on this stream because when, so, <laughs> all right. So, so now to the, the dualistic mind starts, right? Then it can only contrast everything between good and evil. And the reason why I mentioned that it starts to slip into the family structure, like the, the, the son fighting the father, the, uh, uh, the, the mother uh, fighting the father, and this kind of perception, this, this distorted perception, which we, we saw where it comes from, which is the split, right? So, but in that process, what you get is, is you get, if man, well, who, if man is the positive one and gets related to the sun, because <laughs> all this is incorrect, but this is how the world is, is, has built its knowledge. So if the man is the positive one in the patriarchy and works with the sun, that means woman is the negative one. So then this leads one to start thinking that the, the positive one is the good one and the negative one is the bad one then. <laughs> so then men are good and women are bad. So see, the mind tumbles down those steps when it doesn't have an arbitrator or it doesn't have a floating component. Like all our ancestors, they had, they had balance. They had a floating component. That's why they put a serpent and a bird right here as an indicator. Like, look, I'm, I, got these, I got this balanced, this DNA, especially of light, of a reptile and a mammal, which have ancient histories to them. I got all this imbalance because in the, in the event that it doesn't, warfare breaks out in your consciousness, in your mind, in your world. And then, as I said before, so then it makes, if the woman was the good one, then the man has to be the bad one. This is how we start trying to perceive everything. And when that happens, actually, that, that's also a product of, if we look at the sun and then we assume that the sun is a male, it's even suggesting, since a son is a boy, S-O-N is a boy, it's trying to suggest to you that this is a male. And since the male is would be the one giving life, so you see, you're, you're just coming into these reasonings, and but all these reasonings are coming off of initial foundation that is incorrect. So it's like you're building a building on a cracked foundation. 
which is a perception that the son is even a, just a male, when by default, anything that can run like that 24 seven would have to have a masculine and a feminine or a positive and a negative and a neutral. And so when you would aspire to be like the sun, you would be like positive, negative, neutral. You wouldn't be like a father or a man. Do you get it? So anybody who went down that path of just the father and the son, those became the oppressors in this space that we're in right now. Now they do have a bridge to the moon. I will give them that, meaning that in their spiritual acceleration inside of, uh, let's see, what do we wanna call the dogma today? <laughs> we'll just call it that. They have one connection, which is to the house of the moon, which they call the Lord. So that's as far as they can go. So you see that basically there becomes a limitation symbolically within their knowledge because their knowledge can get no further than two or bet or the house, which is the moon. Now, that kind of sounds like gambling in a minute. You know, like you got bet or Beth, who's the house, which means house. That's Hebrew, which is known to be the moon, which was seen as, you know, and, and, and they were even struggling with it because they knew that the, the no lunar bodies are just feminine. The ancients were calling it Nanar Sin, which was depicted as a man. And then it just starts throwing you from there. It's like, is it a man? Is it a woman? Because the same root to the confusion, is it a man or is it a woman, is actually what keeps tripping you up the whole time because it's trying to enforce a dualistic state. So now you got to go through the rest of the experience without your power. That's the purpose of that. Now, who is or what is doing that? Like, did they make notations at all of any kind of being that could actually do something like that? Yes, they did. They called it a covering cherub. The covering cherub. It even mentions it. I think it mentions it in the biblical text. It mentions it in the Quran. Occultists know about it. If they're high enough in their degrees, they generally say nothing about it because they're actually serving it. The covering cherub is a cherubim of light. Okay, so they start trying to describe this. But remember, now it's like, do we have any spiritologists in the background here? Do we have anybody who studies spirits? Do we know anybody that knows the difference between an ophanim versus the aphanim versus a rephim? So it's like there's, there's, this is falling on deaf ears, this level of knowledge and wisdom generally, because there's no one that is actually in that space to find this kind of thing important to their existence because they're enveloped by it. And that's what a covering cherub is. Because if you could actually see into the spiritual world right now and see how decisions that you are ma you've made or are making are creating a certain result, how long do you think it would take for you to be wise? If you saw that based on a decision that you were about to make, because you could see the energy all around the whole thing. You know what I mean? If, if you saw that when the Nicki Minaj CD came, <laughs> came in the CD player, would you really put the CD in? You know, because you would know exactly what you were dealing with. So you see what the world is, the one you're looking at, this is the dream within the dream. This is what I call the fake matrix. This is why the fake matrix, it has holes in it. Like you could literally see where the builders didn't finish building the fake matrix versus the one that it's inside of is perfect. And that's why when you go on an experience, you'll see the one that you're inside of. You look at the stars and everything. You're like, man, this is perfect. And you can mess up and confuse once you touch down again that the that the thing is perfect because you but you're not there anymore when you were seeing that perfection and how everything was tied in together. But then when you when you went back into the body in the body, the world that you live in because of what has been put in your mind is distorted. It's, it's not it's not in direct alignment with the one that is all there is. So this is a matrix within a matrix and it's very poorly designed. And it's done that way because it has a great level of limitation. It has a limit. And those limits is what we're talking about today that we have to, we have to break through because you're gonna need it here. <laughs> if you see what's going on around you, 
10, 12 years ago, this message was like climbing up a hill. We were doing Everest with people. They was like, they were looking at us like we had, we were nuts. Now it's like, okay, so um, who is it again? What's his name? Covering Cherub. All right. So let me know a little bit more about that. What that is, is that so this reality that we're seeing over us, this is called the serpent. It's called the skin or the derma or the dream because a cherub is like a serpent. OK, and that they depicted it this way because, you know, it's like, oh, shit, serpent. We have like thousands of years of embedded triggers for that word. What it is, is, is it's saying symbolically, you see how with a snake that things could be inside of it. Imagine that a large one just covered an entire reality, but not like how you're seeing it. You may be seeing it externally, like a snake is swallowing something. When what you need to see is that as a hyperdimensional or a glimmering snake, right? They tried to explain it. They were just kind of struggling with words. It was like, it's, it's like of light, they were trying to explain, right? When you look at some of the books where someone's trying to explain, it's like, it's like of light. Now, none of this stuff gets any further than us because we are it. And we've been through that so many times that you would be able to find it on you. You would have your own. You have your own universe. So which one is it? Oh, it's the skin, the covering cherub that covers everything that's going on the side of your body. Because if when you took that shot of, I don't know, Hennessy or whatever, and you saw what the organ was like, oh, you know what I mean? And then this other one just grew dark. You just saw that grow dark in the mirror. Would you really be doing any of that? No, but the skin, it covers it, right? And so now you to, get to learn these energies is to learn yourself. So do you see how it's like this, this beauty, right, is where everybody is at most of the time. They're looking at that and working on that. But meanwhile, inside, they could be doubly dead. I mean, just stuff is just rotten. They haven't even, they don't even know how to clean themselves. They ain't perfuming themselves. They run right out of the house after hitting up some zest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Them strong ass poisonous soaps. And you know what I mean? Some Colgate, you know what I mean? And hit themselves up with some of that Jakar Noir. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just, just you just po <laughs> you just poisoned yourself. And then you head out there in your wardrobe ready for war fair, right? Of who looks the best, who's doing the best, who's got the most, and how can I lie right now to get as much leverage in this situation? Because that's what the cherub does. That's just its power. It's its force. It's just wrong with the cherub. It's just what it does. It's like a simulation ground. If you can imagine, it's a it's a hypnosis in itself. It's the ability to put yourself in your own mind and stop imagining this and go and imagine whatever you want until a point where it starts becoming solid. It's the same, that's the same power of what this is when it's translated into what we call the higher, more refined states. But here it's covering the reality, right? And I always say that's actuality. So it's covering that. And in this process, we have to ask ourselves then, okay, so we've already, maybe some of us, some haven't sat down with this question, it's come to the terms that maybe there are some, some more powerful beings, maybe. We have a hard time with this. That's why one of the symbols of the US is the eagle. <laughs> because man, like to the ability of trying to think that something could be more powerful than you is tough to deal with. <laughs> Even though we have parents and we experienced that when we were younger, it's like the parents are stronger than us. They know more than us. So there's always this process in these kind of spaces where there's always something that is at least one more level up. Now, I don't want to go to Andromeda with you tonight. <laughs> I want to stay here on earth and I want the question to be answered. Could there be an, another like slightly more advanced being on earth with us right now, not on Mars, <laughs> not on the moon, not on Venus, not, not anywhere else here. And so most people are like, well, no, cause we ain't seen them yet. 
we're waiting. <laughs> the arrival could come at any point. And this is ridiculous. Because it's very clear that when we talk about levels, if that was numbers, there's a one and a half, then a two. There's a two and a half, then a three. So what the halves are for is to let you see a little bit of it. So that means that technically, if there was a being that was more graduated or one level up from us, we would be able to see a little bit of it. Can we? Yes. Anybody who's been on a journey before with the diamond tree, anybody who's lucid dream, anybody who Cambo, peyote, the list goes on and on and on of, of power trees, basically that, because they have the knowledge, they have the experience, they have the time, they're going to transfer the time to you and light codes. All the trees are, are the sun. All everything is, is an emanation of the sun. The sun is a soul. So every little refracted piece of the soul is here. So when it leaves, where does it go? Up, back there. You see what I mean? And that, that's the cycle. That's death, regeneration, rebirth. So the trees, because they can stay, they stand in the space longer because they ain't moving around. You know, so they're not walking downtown all the time. <laughs> you see what I mean? They're, they're in their space and they're holding their space. So they're absorbing all the light. They're absorbing all the light codes and they're storing the codes inside their bark, inside their fruit, inside their children. And that's how the matrix, the real matrix stays intact because every single thing here is a confirmation of everything that it is and that it has learned. So this is the process of adaptation. So once again, one more level up, what would that be? It's just, it's activated human. I want to say it's just because it's not like you could download, uh, downplay this being. It, it does not have an issue with fear. It does not have an issue with death. It's like you're activated all the time. You're already aware of activation. You know how to control it. You have, and that's just being able to control the five elements and understanding how to maximize or reduce them in the proper measure in order for you to manifest whatever it is that you're looking to manifest. Are there beings that live here that are like that? The answer is yes. If you got to take my word for it tonight, then do that. But I would encourage you to actually become that being yourself. So let's keep riding out. One second. Well, I guess my second camera, you know, he's my second camera. He does one day, my second camera is going to come through. So, so with this notion, we can go forward. And this notion is that there's another being here that is slightly more activated or powered up or on another level than us. And what that being then would know how to do is it would be a master of the five elements. I'm just kind of speeding you along through this. What, what would this being know? The mastery of the five elements, because in all ancient tribes, from Kemet to Scot Scotland, well, that's what I, I give it to them that way, just from Kemet to Scotland, this is what is known to be the power of the adept, is to control the elements, earth, fire, wind, water, to go through the trials, which I think we're still in right now, and then be able to graduate those trials and become a master over those elements. And when you are a master of those elements, you are able to actually exist in physical space, but your power and your ability, well, for instance, one of my friends who decided to go to China to become a Dojin master, right? So he was reading up on the Dojins. He realized that they had some level of power and, you know, being attracted to power, he went there. He said, uh, well, I met him after the fact, by the way, he became a friend. And but he said immediately what happened is once he ended up meeting this Dojin master, he told his master, you know, I want to I want to start studying. I want to I want to learn this 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 technique and power that you have. He said this master snatched him out of the body into another world and killed him in there. And then he experienced the process of death. And then he came back to this world. He snatched him out of this, that, this world again and took him into another world and killed him in there. This is extremely traumatic. It did definitely, <laughs> again, so that's, what, that's true. Somebody who's like, that's what I'm going to go do. I'm going to go be a doja master. Like, I'm giving you the whole addendum. Maybe you want to figure this out on your own. Because from that point on, I will say, and I met this guy, that there was this imprinting that his master had done on him to where 
anytime he referred to his master, he would just be like, my master. It was weird because he would just kind of like blank out for a moment, like, oh, my master. And I assume from psychology that that was a product of him being destroyed by his master in this kind of way. So it was like a way of breaking him in immediately to I am the master. I can do things that you cannot and I can take life from you and bring you back to life. You see, so imagine, you know, that kind of thing going on. You can't even imagine that kind of thing, right? But it's happening. There are people that are here. There are beings that are here that are just one more level up with the same kind of powers and abilities that you have, but trained. Okay. So the reason why I wanted to bring that up is just awareness that that wasn't something that eventually happened. That was something that always was, that we always had this power until we didn't. And the beings that still have this power, they're one more level up. And they're one more level up because the beings that don't have that power, they can't pierce through the veil. So they cannot see what's going on on the other side of things. And then this allows them to constantly make errors. So the invisible aspects of the reality with not being able to see them, it's like you fumble through the reality, tripping over and twining into all types of things, right? So I just wanted to clarify in this build though that there are masters. Right. So you can imagine with the mastery of fire, earth, wind and water, what you would be able to do and how that would be perceived by someone who cannot do that. Right. So that's like their, your parent. It's like you see your parents doing something that you cannot do. So you would have nations that the parent would teach the children how to do that. And then later on, you had nations that were enslaving their children with that. Okay, so this is the era we're in now is that that kind of power, which is being held within a, a, a very small consolidated few within secret societies, is still something that they do that same thing to enter the initiates and apprentices. And a lot of times they don't even have to use that anymore. There's enough in trees and substances and geometry to take a person through an uh, experience to where when they come out of there, they'll be like, man, we found heaven. Whatever the king wants me to do, that's why they call him accepted. And whatever the king wants me to do, I'm in. He may walk in on some goat legs and everything, and you're just like on some LSD, and it's just like you're done. Every from there, your 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 record of your soul has been marked to a point where you can't even like think outside of all of that, and that there may be something beyond all of that. And that's also what happens in religions and dogmas. Few make it out; it marks them. Actually, we see that a lot. We see that entities have a tendency and energies have a tendency to mark what they think they own. And that's why I say this is very animalistic kind of behavior because it's like a dog will mark things and a cat will mark things. This is where that comes from. So it's just an awareness of this is a 360 degree. So let me explain this just very simply. How the ancients saw it was that you had the sun during the day, which they called on, like the lights on. This, the, word, the word is still on your light switch. You turn it on, you get the light. Then they had what they call DAG. This means that when the sun goes below the horizon, they see it as that it's going into the water and it becomes a fish. Okay, so that's the symbolism of DAG on. Whatever they're talking about, whatever they're saying, they've probably taken it so far out of context because that initial part that we talked about earlier with the duality thing, they never fixed that. So every, every part of the image that and reflection that they're seeing is cracked when they cannot decode these mysteries. And it was talked about that a time would come where only few would be able to interpret these mysteries. And remember, if there's a 200,000 of us, if there's a million of us, that's still a few compared to 9 billion, okay? So sovereignty then, as we dive into this, because this is, I believe, the, fin the finale of the sovereignty series. Sovereignty then is, again, the ability to be outside of the governance of these four elements and then the fifth element. So even pneuma, even breath is not necessary for you to exist. That's the ultimate. That means that's like what they say, well, I don't need to breathe. I don't need to eat. I don't have those dependencies. That's the, the onset of what I guess they call it nirvana. 
right? So it's like when you don't actually have an attachment to what the five elements are generating as far as energy for you to be perceptive of this reality so that you can feel like you have a purpose. Now you've gone into a whole nother stage. So let's not take off yet. Let's realize why many have not gone into that stage. And it's because sovereignty is compromised through benefits. Because if I couldn't see this from heaven, because heaven was blocked from by a covering cherub, I would have to see it through something else. And that's why the depth says, as above, so below. Because examining as below enough and seeing the connections you can start formulating a big picture of what's happening. And so I can look at the as below and see how sovereignty or this ability to be a master over five elements is compromised because the benefits of the pleasures that the five senses give you. And the only reason why we are so hooked to these pleasures of the five senses is because we think that this is all there is. So in the event that we realize that there's something beyond, then the five elements or four elements, et cetera, do not have the same amount of hold on us as they normally would. So the only thing here is just to perpetuate the strength of the four elements in order to allow a person to remain inside of, uh, of this structure. And so when that finally trickles down into regular life, it kind of comes into things like fiat currency. To use it you have to compromise certain benefits like your privacy, which is a certain level of your power. Electricity, to use somebody else's electricity, you have to agree to oil, using oil. You have to agree to even the, the, the karmas that come along with that. So there is these benefits of you not having to go and find the energy source yourself, but for those benefits, you will compromise your sovereignty. So this is just a, a very crude example, but you'll find the same template present within many things that there's been a compromising of the sovereignty for certain benefits. So I had to bring that into center now because I want everyone to realize that the world, the reason why it's going through this is, is because there's a certain group of entities that they have enacted ability to have power over others through debt. And we never think about this because debt is like death. It's another one of those things that we never think about. We kind of max, once you get into that side though, now those who just got money, they're, they're not experiencing that, right? But those that don't, which is the larger percentage, they find themselves borrowing off of these credit cards and things like that and accumulating debt. But because they're only paying these small monthly fees, they actually don't even think that the debt is really serious. And then also they start kind of like mixing their debt with the spiritual and that the world is fake. And they start thinking that maybe their debt is not even real. Maybe it's all a game anyway. And then the whole magic or sorcery actually of debt is overlooked. And that's actually what's happened in the world right now. The world has been borrowing so much it's kind of forgot to determine what was going to happen when what it's been borrowing that energy from wants it back or wants its payments. So this is now symbolically, even now in the reality, Evergrande, right? The Chinese version of a 2008 situation, right? So we have debt which is, of course, the U.S. debt has, was, is being almost defaulted on. This is the new, this is going to be what they cook up for, for Halloween, you know, so they can turn a day that generally is actually unity or actually an entire period that is a unity of our ancestors coming to us and delivering to us ancient knowledge in the prism. They turn that into a time of ghosts and goblins and 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 and. and and devils and demons and all sorts of stuff that they cook up as the reality starts getting more confined with fear about the job. How am I going to make money? Job or jab? <laughs> jab or job? Jab, jab or job, basically. The jab or walkie, as I call it. So it's like, but why? Because, well, there is a, a thing called money, <laughs> fiat, 
right? And then there is the origin to money, which I said is talismans. And then there is this exacting of, well, you know, if you, if, if you want these benefits, this is what you're going to need to do now. And that's going to continue. So once you start finding yourself making decisions based on what somebody else is saying that you will be able to, to continue if you make that decision, you already know it's time. These are only indicators. They're just there to wake you up to like, because it gets beyond this. It's not just this immediate situation. This immediate situation is a segue into something. And so if you're going to nip it in the bud, you need to do that now. And you need to come to this awareness that, okay, well, for, first of all, there is a specific institution and even a specific priestcraft. They call themselves the priests of Zodok. Sometimes they call themselves the priests of Zion. Sometimes they call themselves, so they got a bunch of names, but their system is that of debt. They buy debt from the world. Because you remember how they were talking about like people were borrowing money and then other countries were buying the debt? Why would you buy somebody's debt? Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> Why buy someone's debt? It just seems like the that's like buying... <laughs> That's like buying someone's feces or something. It's like, why would you buy something that is like the, the, the worst side of a person? Well, what happens if you owe somebody and you don't have the, the money, in this case, that's the integer, to pay them and somebody else pays it for you? Take a moment and ask yourself that question. You owe a debt, you can't pay the debt. The person that you owe the debt to wants the money. They're going nuts. You got to get them their money. They start breaking legs next. Someone comes along and says, hey, I'll pay them. You have to ask yourself, for what? If they're not your friend. And then that same entity, why would it buy up everybody's debt? What does it want? It wants that leverage, that leverage to be able to say, you owe me. And when you say, no, I don't, then it's going to say, oh, yeah, right here. This, this thing that you thought was fake, this thing that you thought was no account, it was just plastic. Because of the terms <laughs> which you signed, this is your signature, right? Well, this is what we're expecting. That's what's going on behind the scenes. That's not how they sell it. You ever seen a MasterCard commercial? Everywhere you want to be. And that's a visa, everywhere you want to be. They show the restaurant, Monaco, you, they doing it, right? And it's just like, you get this 5,000, you could do this too. But what's behind all of that? And that's what we're experiencing now in the world or the debts are being called in. And that's, coming as an upset to those who have been in the game because they're like, well, shoot, I thought, you know, like we was cool. Like you was taking care of me. Is this the house? So notice how the terminology being used here. Remember, this is bet. Bet is the house. But this house is more run like a casino versus the original house is in an ecosystem and it's perfect and there's nourishment for everything in the ecosystem from its, from its life to its death. But the matrix inside the matrix is not using those same principles. It's actually reversed. Instead of it being about life, which is the original matrix, the original womb is about life. Duh. This one's about death, which actually doesn't exist to our ancestors. They didn't have words for that the way we understand it. So this is why we have to see symbolically what is going on in the world when they can say, hey, everybody do X or we removing the money. Well, that's going on everywhere. And then also any country that was didn't have a certain amount of debt, because this obviously is a certain kind of energy and there's a need of this faction to have a certain amount of that energy. So they purposely made situations in their country so bad that they have to go and borrow larger amounts that they could never pay back. And so you can imagine the person that's signing it is like, 
they're just dealing with the stressful situation of a complete fallout and collapse or in potentially more collapse of their nation, their society and their tribe. And then here's somebody with a check that says, well, you know, here's the terms. It's about 9,000 pages, but you need the money, right? And then thinking, ah, oh, it's just a world. It's just, I'm trying to take care of these people and sign off because anybody that votes for you you have their you when you vote for someone you're giving them the ability to use your signature and then they're signing things that actually have to do with oaths packs rituals and then from there the debt is called in and then you start losing the benefits if you don't want to conform so this is why you, you got to do something about this today you got to go ahead and get yourself into the power that vanquishes this kind of stuff. It's like, this is death and fear again. Oh, look who showed up. The, the usual suspects, death and fear. Now everybody's dying. Ah, the COVID. Oh my goodness, man. We're all going to be leaving here. <laughs> your little 72 years ain't worth you messing up your light codes for indefinitely, maybe. You see what I mean? Let, let's Let's get some sound vibration here or you'll be pumping yourself with diamond tenacious earth and zeolite for the next five to six months. You know, so if you're already in that position, there's your go to. But this is not going to stop. Don't think this is the only event. This is a segue into something. This is where it's like the fork in a road. And so let's talk about the power. Because obviously, maybe sometimes you can't even see, well, how am I not going to do what they want me to do by, by what level of power and what charge? I'm kind of in a bind here. I'm already like, you know, I don't really even see how I can sustain myself financially. And that's why I said this was an entire process of us understanding all these things for the last 12 years of, okay, do this clean yourself out here, it's going to drop more weight here. Then you're going to get more clear. Then you'll be able to see what to do, but not before then. Here's the procedure. So that's what we've been doing. We've, we knew this was coming. So here we go with, uh, so then, so let's, let's look at the Let's look at the, the past just a little bit of the history of the beings that understand how to work with this power and kind of see how society has been going through these successions of these power hungry entities that end up melting down on themselves when even the, the divided factions, like uh, what are they, the, the Lord of the Rings and all this stuff, when the divided factions can no longer stand each other and they start warring against each other, even with the power that they have, right? So this is the prince of the air, as they call it, Teton. Okay, so in conclusion, it's confirmed, especially with Tyree or Tyre. Tyre is uh, what they're now calling Tartaria. Okay, that's, that's Tyre. And there was known to be the king of Tyree, which they even talk about in the Bible. And they talk about this island that they had in the king of Tyree, who was just soaked and dripped in royalty and, and uh, uh, all gluttony and anything that you can think of, the king of Tyree was into it. And let's say this arose the nations of Assyria, which would basically, they say that when the Assyrians begin to sweep the land, that the from from I think it was from uh, Samaria to Libya, that they encountered tribe after tribe that were not trained in anything like warfare and knew nothing like warfare. And that the Assyrians were basically a group of it was started from one king who was the king of Tyre, who began to train men through rigorous exercises of warfare in order to overcome in any situation. And that was the kind of the this, the, the jadedness of the king of Tyree's mindset. But the king of Tyree also being, let's say in this case, direct progeny from the sun, this is just anyone that is aware of their connection with the sun, had the power of the air. And the power of the air is the power of the ion. It is the ability to bring a lightning bolt here and now. So, the prince of the air rapidly took over the world because he could bring thunder. This became Zeus. 
and also electricity to power what became our first electronics. This is why your mud flood cats are like, there's something going on with these buildings. It looks like coils. It looks like that they're powering their entire society on electricity of some sort. This is why in Egypt, they show halls, massive halls bored out and drilled out perfectly with no lights and no stains on the ceiling like smoke has been on the ceiling, which happens in any place that something's been lit. Do they got electricity? Yes. Let me explain it to you in the numbers. So it wasn't just the Prince of the Air and Titans. It was also the Olympians, but this power of controlling the air element, this is the air element alone, just airbender can bring lightning at a moment. They say that this was like the shot, they call it the shock and awe. I mean, you would, you ever been in a thunderstorm, like a real one, when the ground shakes? This is the power of the prince of the air or anyone who has mastered and really mastered the air element. The first step is cloud busting, <laughs> just to make it relevant to you. Cause you may think, shoot, man, come on, man. We controlling the air. You're talking about light, man, come on, man. I can't believe that. Cloud busting first. Then the ability to do what lightning does with ions and then boom, the thunderer, Zeus. So with this power, which is also electricity, the elect, this is like the elect side of society. Now they're saying, meanwhile, <laughs> the clock that is playing out in the sky lets you know every time that the, basically the, the projected matrix is going to go into one of these cycles. All right, here is time, Prince of the Air time, war time, electrons, the whole nine, bring it. And so that's why the adept, anytime you, you're, you're looking at the clock, you know what time it is and you know what times are coming. And so you're always adjusted for everything that's going to happen. It's almost like you're back there with popcorn, like here they go, they're about to go into the air. Here it is versus, ah, you know, like you're in the terror and the fear and the death. So also the power of air is in the ability to make the air, what you would say is orgasmic. This feeling that, even if you breathe it in, it would stimulate you. It would make like the hair stand up on the back of your neck. This is also the power of working with the ion. And so in that kind of field, anything you say into that kind of field manifests. This is why even in the sorcery that's being cooked up now, they generally get themselves all worked up sexually. They consecrate the air, which, or and generally there's a, ge there's a geometric going on. They concentrate the air with this energy, and then they start uttering their spells and casting spells. So they're speaking right into that electrically charged, if you may, environment, because that's what manifests things. The orgasmic energy manifests things. So there's basic rules here. There's basic principles here. Anyone who deviates from these rules and these principles, their powers will be void. They will not work. You see what I mean? So there, there's a basic thing that is happening here, and there's a basic level of power. And it's already written out in the sky, and it's written out through the numbers. So I'm going to take a quick moment because I'm going to go through the, these numbers from a level of ancient knowledge to understand the process of how the ancients saw the power of the world and how the world was put together with the power. And, but first, before we do that, and before we go in for, I think we're gonna do like a, a five to seven minute break so I can refresh myself, is just to understand that the stars are the offspring of the sun. So once again, in your visualization projector, even though you're seeing the sun, your, your sun in the sky, this is all in itself a template Realize that there is a mag magnetar, a central sun. And that everything that sprays forth from that, like, man, you could be on a journey. You look up at the sun and you're like, man, what is that? You just kind of look away you're like, OK. And you go on enough journeys, look at the sun again, you realize that every single thing that is in the reality has the code of the sun running through it. This is why they said symbolically that it was like it was us. It was living as us that the sun which in this case, 
You know, I would love to get the supreme. Let's give it that term so it doesn't even sound like a male. The supreme was was living out through these these the raindrops of of the sun. So it's like if you see the excuse me the 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 moon, the sun drops, the rays of the sun are the shards of the soul, are the stars in the sky, are the eyes that see the experience and reflect the experience off each other, peeing the light through a lattice work or matrix, and thus creating a network of interlaced and interwoven things that confirm the existence as this is like a point to point system because I've been there because I seen it, I can verify it and it's still there. Like even almost like the blockchain works. It's like a point to point system that con that confirms what happened again. And that's why everything that's said and everything that's done, it is written. So now it's time for us to begin to realize this power. And instead of melting down all the time in conflict, like we're always being encouraged by the surrogate parents, there's a surrogate mother and father. They're sterile. They, they treat the entire reality with white gloves on. They don't touch it. We have to come in and do the work that we have to do with ourselves and also each other by realizing what are these mysteries and what are these mysteries saying? So I'm going to give this a quick moment. I want to let it breathe because I want to go ahead and release these mysteries so that is very clear the procession in these numbers and in the sky. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we're just going to give it a quick moment. We'll put on some tunes. This will be a good time to refresh yourself, stretch yourself out. And yeah, <laughs> let's get ready to go into it in a minute. Here we go. Five minutes. Your awareness may be powerful enough to control your instincts. Your instinct will be to remove your hand from the box. Nitric acid, glycerin, and a special mixture of iron to 
together it's all of all dangerous stuff and you are to mix together in the right way as only I know how. What do you think it makes? I don't know, sir. Of you don't know. You don't know because only I know. If you knew and I didn't know, then you'd be teaching me instead of me teaching you. And for a student to teach his teacher, it's presumptuous and bold. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Good. Tribe. My tribe. They live in another 
another planet, in another solar system. Even in your life, some truth slips through. That mythical community you're supposed to come from. Fort Wayne. What about it? A fort. Unconsciously, you chose a name that was belligerent. Where were you nurtured? All right, fam, hopefully you enjoyed that little intermission and you got an opportunity to refresh yourself. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue in the space with um, the final part of today's rejuvenation build, because realistically, if we're in a world, we've been here for many of us, I'm sure if you're here in this conversation, you're here for at least 20 years. And at times, you know, you could see how it's like, man, is this going to be how it works forever? You know, some of us that are older, you know, you see your children like, man, is this what the world's going to be like for them? And for me, I don't really have those questions. I've already come to a point where I realize the level of power and awareness that we really have and that we really can obtain. And I'm just the beginning what I've been able to accomplish even in this last 12 years in my life with the community has been amazing. I don't think that I ever get an opportunity to really sit in that though <laughs> and just be like, wow, like even with what's going on around me and, and even things that I've been able to create, et cetera, I very seldom have the time to just sit there and, and say, wow, we really did it because there's still way more to come. And I never grow tired in this experience and I constantly stay rejuvenated. And so what I'm giving to you is just that, that rejuvenation and that ability to keep lighting yourself resplendent infinitely, to never get tired through your existence and to always see what's new and to be the tip of the sun and to demystify all mysteries, to remove these fears of this boogeyman and see it as it is. That's just how I realize the difference between consciousness is really whether you're willing to accept how things are and work with that, or are you still expecting to change it into something else? Because when you wanna change it into something else, you're never present. Like you're not present in what you're in, you're with the change and you're manifesting there. And they say, even that's the, sec that's the secret. <laughs> you know, just thinking about things that you know, don't have anything to do with where you're at now as if you're there to manifest those things in your life. And, but what happens when it's like Best Buy and you just keep doing that with more and more items and you just look up one day and you have so many worlds and so many projections running and then you're like, man, what, <laughs> you know, what, where am I at? What's going on? So this message is for you. So we'll start from the zero. That's the entry point. It doesn't need a description. We already talk about, we don't talk about the zero. <laughs> that is just one of the, the things that I've learned over time. It's just like, you know, why try to put a limitation on the unlimited? So that's your portal and that's your way through. And I've always believed personally that that's what the sun is. Is It's not even just like a, a, a big bright ball of fly, fire, but more of a hole in what's on the other side is that bright and we're in the womb and that's our, that's the, that's the pipeline that we're getting like our, our umbilical. That's the pipeline that we're getting all of our nourishment from. Now, if this wasn't true, then man, trees wouldn't be growing. <laughs> stuff wouldn't be growing under it. And when you remove stuff from its exposure, it stops growing. So it's just like, this is what I'm basing stuff on. I'm not trying to come up with anything because I could just be lost. You, you fake it, you just be in there fake and lost. I mean, shit, I mean, wow. What have you gained for yourself? So I got to go by the real integers and I got to call it like it is because I, I also saw that's where maturity comes in and that a lot of us are running around babies in certain areas. We may be fully grown with beards in one area, but just babies and dealing with something else. So that, that comes from an inability to call it like it is and just work with that. 
And I believe that with compassion, which is what our mothers are teaching us, that's what they do. They don't look at the child, child got, man, I saw a brother, he's missing half of his body, right? So a sister came in, she adopted him. And now he's the fastest runner. He's, he's pumped up. He's motivated, man. That's incredible. You see what I mean? And it's just like with the power source there, you have to recognize that power source and see, you know, where is our divine feminine? How can we empower? Where is our divine masculine? How can we empower? And then be able to create fusion to where a broken magnet comes back together in the physicality to manifest the Christ as they're calling, meaning everyone, all the broken shards of a crystal all together, boom. And, you know, pff, you know, you don't have words for explaining what that would be like, because that's what's not allowed inside of the fake matrix. But again, because there's holes in the fake matrix, like it's got holes in its ozone layer, things seep through. There's always been a connection. There's always been those that are exploring and making journeys into the space and are going to teach you what they learn from where they were. And if, if there's anything that you learn in order to get somewhere, you need to be willing to give. You need to be, know that, man, the only way I'm going to receive is if I give. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about that time and that attention to yourself. See how the mind, every time something is going on where you're tripping and you're feeling anxiety, it's always about something else. It's always about something external, whether it's like if you didn't have a phone, 50% of your stress is gone right away. If you just was in the woods eating grass, you know, until you leveled out, you see what I mean? And, but the stress and the toxin itself of these situations that we're dealing with is stress on the mind. So it's releasing toxins into the, to the mental field. And what that looks like for me is that I dream a hundred dreams in a night. Like I'm seeing, I'm flying through dreams. Like I'm sure others are experiencing this too. It's just like, there is so many scenes from dream to dream to dream. And I'm like, man, look at the mental plane. And, and I realize everything that I'm seeing is for me to do something about. I'm not like, oh shit, it's over. I'm, I'm, what? Over? <laughs> There's no over. <laughs> so what do we do now? And so zero, the entry, one, the first letter of the alphabet, alpha, aleph, is the sun. Okay, so this is now, you're coming into a matrix, right? So the matrix has been built using certain dynamics. This specific matrix is built on this dynamic. The sun is being birthed from the mother into the matrix, <laughs> not into the galaxy. The galaxy is the matrix. You see what I mean? So it's like, where did you, you were going to be inside of it anyway. We talked about that. The derma, the dream, the rainbow snake, as they call it. In, inside of it, you were going to be. <laughs> so if, what is that you? And so they're saying, well, look, the story, it just keeps playing out over and over and over again. So if you're trying to find the story right now, you're going to be doing that with... <laughs> Some of the prime time uh, 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 soap operas in certain people's minds, like Dallas. I mean, you're going to have so much <laughs> strata inside of the memory banks. You are very, you probably wouldn't even be able to see the original scenario and what happened, unless you stop for a moment and just say, "Well, what? There's only there's only a certain thing that could have happened. It's the same thing that's going on now." So we're seeing a being come out of its mother's or it, 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 yeah, it's, and that's the interesting thing. Once again, this being, it's not a mother or a father. It's both. It's, there's beings on the planet now that can do this, but it's like, so the beings that it, it intends to birth, just like as a story, this is a story of the, the, of the Nomo, which the Doguns live to tell is a Nomo planned on everybody being androgynous. Because that was immortality because you could rebirth from yourself, but you had the faculties inside to do that. So you came in the physical plane as an androgynin and you could fuse that together within yourself. That was their intention with the experiment. Then as they're trying to recount it for you, they say that the jackal broke forth from the womb before it had coupled. It leaped. 
And in that, it came out of the womb. So this is one. Okay, so this is now manifesting in the physical reality because it's a physical reality. It's it's a dual matrix. So it has to come through in that. So what is that existence? One, first letter of the alphabet, the sun, the bull, Aleph, or the elephant. Now, this is what I call the, ma the minotaur in the middle of the maze. The confinement alone, because this is like being birthed into another womb. Have you noticed that? It's like, it's like womb after womb. That's what I was saying. When you walk out your house, you're yet in another house. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's like you keep trying to get out, but you're still in the same space in retrospect because it's surrounding you. Okay? So that awareness, it bought in because of that awareness of being in the darkness. So imagine now you come forth, you're now inside of the womb or the planet, but a new one, you've been gestated. You come in, it's dark. The first thing you're going to do is light up. See, this thing is not something somebody has to teach you. It's like instinct. That's why they show the bird, they show the Binu bird, which later on became the phoenix as the symbol, that this thing will just light up. It knows to light up. <laughs> it doesn't need to be trained or taught that. So in that lighting up, symbolism starts really trying to give you a story through the symbols. Now, all of this is so powerful. It did become demonized. It did create demonic people even. It, power corrupts absolutely when it's not group shared. It's just like a power 60,000 volts running through a line that line has to be able to have the right kind of capacity. Even the devices, all the electronics you're generally seeing in the devices to regulate the electrical circuit energy going to different places and not burning it out. If everything just came through, your whole board would just be gone. The lights wouldn't work. So all the electronics is just governing the, the, the feed of energy. So how do we not expect that to be going on here also? But in this respect, Aleph, let me get my water one second. Over here, the filter is really slow. And I've been gone nuclear over here. I need some water, like you know, just wipe me down or something. It's like spray some water on me. So, Aleph is the elephant. Okay, so the, the big bulls coming through. This is energy. See, it's the it's the it's the fertility. Okay, this is the most important point that they're trying to prove here is literally a point. <laughs> and so kind of in nature speak, the largest phallus belongs to the auroch or the bull, right? The first one. And this member is a member of virility and fertility. That's why all of the plants grow based on the sun. So when that comes into a debased person's mind, they think of like this goat god running around a forest that's causing the plants to grow and they in there, you know, going through some sexual rituals and all this because that's the state of consciousness these beings are in. Even if they got the truth, this is what they would do with it. <laughs> they would destroy themselves with it. That's what was always known. So, but this same awareness, if you start associating their destruction with the master codes, now you're screwed. That's how they barred everybody out of the higher heavens, but not have been able to get in themselves. That's what that riddle means. So one, the alpha, the bull comes to, this is the, 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 uh, the minotaur in the middle of the matrix or the maze. The maze is the labyrinth inside of your mind. They already was very clear. They're very clear. Now, if you're inside of your mind and now you're in mazes, this, pro this is probably like that maze in the in, in, uh, at the carnival with the mirrors. So it's not just a maze. It's also a mirror. The walls are mirrors. That's what's making it a maze. You see what I mean? Something, it's just like you, you got to read the symbolism and see what's being said in your mind's eye. So it's like all of that power, enough to power the sun. You have a soul inside of you. You have become the fifth element. So it's like earth, fire, wind, water. Well, those are the elementals. <laughs> and if you watch elementals, they're like programs. They just do what they do. 
It's like they need to be harnessed. They don't opt. That's why they call them the angels, because they don't they just get commands. There's like a program. That's it. And it's only limited to what it can do inside of its program. But then when you bring Numa, basically, when you bring in this etheric thing on top of the four elements, that's what the five is. That's why you see pentagrams all over the place, because they're saying, well, shoot, God is man may manifest a glove. Basically, a supreme being have, has been made manifest in the physical world. This is like, OK, everything is going on. In, this is a clock in the sky. So it's like, OK, well, everything is going perfectly then. So Sunday, that's the first day of the week. Check. So this is it's going to keep confirming itself. So number two, just for the designation is the house that lets you understand that even when they're talking about the woman or the divine feminine, they're not talking about the zero or the womb. And this, this is where, you know, again, learning the mysteries, this is the difference between like the grandmother versus the mistress. It's, you know, it's, they both got a womb, but it's two totally different kind of energies. So this two, this moon or this house, this is the bet. This is basically number two, as we were talking about earlier. Then, so this is, again, the, the coding system of the consciousness, because Bet still contains the power to split. This is the moon. The moon holds the power of being able to split. Like, okay, so when the moon is full, all of the minerals from the ground are sucked into trees, Right. So the tree will pull all the minerals up out of the ground and in the procession of the moon being full. And then that nourishes all of its seeds and all of its plants, etc. But then when the moon goes into the new moon cycle, all of the minerals and everything from the plant will drip back, go back down into the roots because it's also the it's the gravitational pull. You got cats even arguing that there's no gravity. <laughs> you see how it's just like, man, we have to understand what's going on and what is rather than, you know, playing around, because if you're focusing your dynamics on hearsay and rebellion, you will get tore up out here and folks are getting tore up. This is not if this hap this is happening. <laughs> it's like it's when we look throughout the land and we're seeing this met the, the ones carrying this message, it's like a minefield. Do you not think I'm watching this? Like, OK, so they, they got the Pharaoh. Now they got Brother Polite. Then they got you know, this person over here, this got this person over here. This guy's now saying he's a vampire. He's wearing vampire clothing. So all of this stuff going on, I'm like, <laughs> man, hold this in balance vibrations. Like, what's up? Like, man, that's exactly what we were talking about, that you were going to need to apply a certain level of awareness. And you're going to have to do that continually in order for you to be to be on point in this time because the secrets are going to unravel themselves, but they're going to unravel themselves into a time where people are going to be so distracted. They're not going to be able to assess the power and see the code of what's really happening. So we know that the house we're, we're, we're in the house, right? Because the moon is nourishing a certain part of the, the yin and yang force that is going on here. So that's two. Then when we hit three, three, symbolically is directly related to the three phases of the sun. It's a code about the trident, basically this, this symbol of power that was like the demons and the devils or any kind of words you can give to, to signify something distorted that, that wasn't true within itself, that the trident was the thing that you used on it. <laughs> and they say that how this works is that the sun has three types of energy. This is, of course, the Brahma, the Shiva, the Vishnu. This is early in the morning when the sun is rising, when it's actually giving off most of its nourishment. You can feel it. Like, especially as if you're tapped into your divine masculine, you can feel the energy rise and coming, start coming through the body, right? So then, then we have 12 noon. This is full blast. Like, everybody's just like, okay, <laughs> But it's like, OK, I, I am like I really, really will blast out this frequency right now. Right. And then there is sunset. Like, all right, chill, chill, chill. Like we about to go down to the underworld again and, you know, see what's happening. <laughs> That's the Vishnu. What is Vishnu? A fish. Right. Fish body. 
So Brahma, Shiva, Vishnu. So in all of the systems, it's going to be the same if the system is exact. Three is about the phases of the sun. And then it's the trident of realizing exactly how you have to deal with things sometimes. Is it going to be morning energy? <laughs> all rise. Is it going to be, hey, you're about to get the smoke. It's 12 noon, <laughs> high noon. If you've ever gone on a journey at high noon, man, I, I anything that I thought was myself was blown away. I don't know how I ended up doing this. We're going to go on a journey at 12 noon on the beach in the middle of the whole sun set up for sure. I was like, man, I'm like, but what I'm getting at here is that you got three different kinds of energies and that's how you have to deal with distortion. Four, this is the divisions of the Zodiac. So four is directly related to the control of time and integers of time at its base. This is why you have this, the, the season sitting in the four seasons, and then you have the four decks of cards, right? Or you got the four houses in the card deck. And excuse me, yeah, you have, you have the four, the jack, the queen, the king, the ace. So all of this is directly related to time and the time and the movement of seasons and actually the manifestation in time and seasons. Why? Because a farmer cannot plant something at the wrong time. It won't grow. A baby is in the womb generally nine months. So there's time frames to everything inside of creation. So if there is no four, there is no way of analyzing all the time frames within creation to allow things to create the process of the growth of something. This is, in again, inside of the matrix. Then we have five, which we got into earlier. This is, again, the five senses, two arms, two legs, and a head. This is four elements plus aether. So this is, once you would, once you would have the codes in the gestation of time, look how it rolls out if you wanted to say it from a, from a one to a certain, just counting up. Once you have the codes and the times, now, now, you go and actually bring the being into life, which is five. This is very important. It's not the other one first. That's why you see that a lot of, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of contention around certain groups of beings being born through wombs that didn't know how to have children or to nourish children. And so we have different mothers. This is like what they say, the, the Pleiades, right? The seven sisters. So we have seven wombs, nine wombs, really. And birthing through, birthing these colors, if you may. And so in this process, this power bringing in, wow, the energy is just, wow, the energy is just so powerful right now. Like I just had to take a moment just take a breath like whew. I just encourage everyone to do the same thing it's just like I see I could I could see when all of this is manifest and and that's what's happening to me these days it's like I see just how everything is supposed to play out and then I see every time when it plays out that way. And I've seen that for 12 years to a point now where, since I know the rest of how it plays out, I fully believe and know that it's going to play out that way. And then what that does is it allows me to tap into the energy that when it plays out that way, which is that we actually come into an awareness of who we truly are and we activate our being. And I believe that, or know that the only thing is for you is you have to tap into that space yourself and make sure that you're always tuned into that space. Like when you're checking base with yourself, you need to always make sure that you know that beyond this, you have already activated and, and that's there now. And in here, you have, to, you have to shine your light. Like they say that every human being is a star. You have to shine your light 
so precise. It's not so much so bright, but so precise that it just pings right to you here inside of this womb. As deep as we're in this matrix, a dream within a dream, but that it still beams all the way to you into your deepest dreams and awakes you from there. So that like a, like a flower, you can start seeing yourself unfolding. You can start seeing yourself budding. You can see stuff like these mysteries and be like, yeah, okay, so they got the whole system running basically on a clock. It's like the same clock that's on the wall. It's all, you know, 12 or four plus four plus four. You see what I mean? So these are all the same numbers. All right, so here we are over here. We're the pentagram, right? So that's why they're so fascinated with this pentagram thing because it's the manifestation of all the things that they want to plant on the earth. And that's why the pentagram is the plow. And meanwhile, we're working. <laughs> we we working our ass off. Like what the hell's going on? How did we catch some kind of slave job? And it's because, oh, we're in debt. It's man, it's manifesting itself in the physical reality again as a credit card debt and as a house debt and those kind of debts this time. But what it truly is, is it's that those energies still lingering around that have to come into to, that we have to bring into perfection. Right. Because we have been used as pentagrams magical objects to manifest things for other beings that the things that they're doing with those things that we are manifest helping them manifest is not on the level and it's as simple as that and in a court of law whether it's a galactic court or one on one down at the courthouse there's convictions that happen because of that conviction just means that there's something inside you that says you know what man i got to get away from these beings Yes, I respect that there's other entities and they're doing it a different kind of ways, but this ain't it. I, I know what we're supposed to be doing. So this is, this is the reinforcements like daily that you got to be on yourself like, man, this ain't it. Like, I do appreciate the chance that I've been given, but that's also for me to go with what my ancestors were doing and what the original matrix is about. How am I going to get to that? Like, what are the steps and what are the procedures? I need to be on that. But then there is a point for those that are asking themselves their questions that day, uh, uh, asking the, this, these type of questions to, the, to themselves every day. There is a point where you don't have to ask yourself that question anymore. It's like every single day there's a synchronicity and something rolling out for you to connect to. So don't feel like that you always have to stay into this Kung Fu Bruce Lee type discipline. You know what I mean? And, and that's how you're going to obtain this. What it's simply about is that you getting and being you and then spending the time on yourself. And if you have this debt, this is why the debts always are calling like, oh, no, you got to work. Oh, you got to do this. You got to come over here. You got to build over that because if you still want these benefits. And so this build today is just about the awareness that, listen, you see how we explain the same energies that have been demonized. So let's look at it again. So we're, we'll, we went five, six, the sixth day. Okay. So man, if you notice, according to the, the generations of Isis, Genesis, man and serpent and animals are created on the sixth day. It's a code. We know that six is sex is sex is chess. Those are all words in their respective language for the form of copulation, which always is uh, starting with the S, a V, a U, a Z, or a S in all languages, because all those letters are the same. An F is the same as a V, hence the word knives, right? Knife and knives, right? So there's a code within the language and the priestcraft kept this code in the language because the code is also the movement of the stars. So it's like your words and your alignment, which the codes allow you to be able to create in space time for real. And anybody who can't do that, as I said before, is astonished by beings that can do it. And that's what the Illuminati really is. A few beings that can do it and anyone who comes in contact with them is blown away by their power and they get blinded by that being's light. So they don't get a chance to see that they have the same power. And generally these selfish and greedy ones, they don't even tell the person that they have that kind of power too. That's the core base 
fundamental of what we do is to understand you have this power. We start off there. We don't start off with gods, entities, beings, planets, none of that. It starts with you. So from here, as they say, and on the sixth day, this power of six is the Uraeus, right? So this is a word that also is symbolic to the number six. This is also called Ophis. This is the first time you see O being mentioned again. And thus you can then denote that everything that begins with O is a part of this. What is it? It is a serpent. It is sex. It is two interlacing triangles or a circle with a dot in the center, symbolic of the action of creation, right? So it can pluralize anything. Anything you put an S on, it's going to create more of them. So again, this is the process of creation. So there's like, okay, so five. So we got these, we got these pentagram God angel beings. Now what are we going to do? Multiply them, six, right? So this is also, they say it's a striking, this, this, this symbol is a striking position of a cobra, right? That's what they say. This is, this is the, the meaning of this symbol. Now you see how they always, they always like, yes, and, and it's dangerous and it's going to bite and it's, my child, sit down. What that means is this is when the phallic symbol is most erect and ready to disperse the seed. OK, and the reason why that's so important, because that's that's electron power. That's what they say is that the, the, the thing about when you're creating life in water is that you have to fire electron into the water and then life spontaneous. The first single cell of far, a part of life appears through the electron. So but the male now, of course, that's you know, this is basic elements. So you're not going to grow a whole world off of that. <laughs> that's where they went. They like, but there's no way this could get to. No, this version of electrons, because electrons are different, they're not all the same, sit down. This version of electron and its potency has the potential to produce nations. So again, this is, this is the meaning, this is the interpretation. And from there, now you start seeing the faculties of time come into play, because when you multiply six by Two, you get 12. And this gives us this Zodok, as it's mentioned. It's like the 12 months, how the seasons roll into the months and fours. So it's like it's a clock within itself. If you notice, it's like, OK, all the pieces are kind of fitting into this clock. But each of these pieces have a different use. So when you start rolling into seven, this number is it's known. OK, so when you're seeing there is an 18 de degree disc that is moving through the sky that we're calling the Zodiac. And this disc, which they call, uh, they say they say even it's the Ouroboros. Right. They say it has 36 rooms because each of these rooms being divided by three gives you 12 times three, right? So that this disc is moving through, but inside of this disc, there is seven primary rulers. This is what you can see moving through the disc. Most of the time is these seven planets specifically. And so those became known as the fates because they say, well, that's, that's the, the, the actual uh, integer that you would use to determine what time it is and what's happening and what's going on. And the rulership is to be able to know what time it is. That's basically the rulership. You know what time it is. It's not like these powers that you're going to take control of and they're going to be serving you. And you're going <laughs> to, what do you, this big throne and all these entities coming down, bowing down on you like, man, too much X-Men. Listen, it's about you understanding how it's moving and then understanding that, hey, I'm in a, I'm in a boat. <laughs> hey, I'm in, I got sales and I'm, uh, or sales, C-E-L-L-S, and I can be on this cosmic ocean and catch this, this current and start taking myself into another space and another time to start being able to actually really do some, some uh, d discovery and some exploration and some seeding. Like even right now, it's like we're scared to have children. And that's why, you know, in conclusion, 
the mark of the beast will have everything to do with fertility. Whatever the mark of the beast is, it's going to remove the fertility from, it's going to try to remove the fertility from, from woman. That's what the code says when you're finally done with realizing the numbers, the 666, but and when it gets distorted and when it flips it upside down, what is it really? It's to, re like they had that movie with the end of days or whatever they call it, where there's only one woman that is capable of getting pregnant. Because see, that's symbolic to understand that we are fertile beings. We're, we live, we have life, we're creators. We're not death, we're not fear. See what I mean? Like that's not our intentions. Like nobody wants to go and die. Nobody wants to be scared, but yet they can actually create a reality where people start even preferring that. They cooking it up this month, they, they couldn't wait. They couldn't wait till that thing crossed over to number one of Doc Ock. Before the now pumpkins is out and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, y'all really want to, <laughs> man, or do you know what's going on? You really want to play? You really want to bring those kind of energies in with the energies that are already going on? This is the real sign of where the consciousness actually is. And that should be empowering for you. You should be like, man, this is it. <laughs> like, it's really the final hour before the new day. And I'm watching folks clown with just what they already know. And that's just letting me know, let me put my seatbelt on tighter and, you know, and be in this and, and, and put my hands up. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like my hands are up like a roller coaster. Like I'm, I'm having fun here. And speaking of that, you know, just to take a moment, hands up for us to just touch and agree in this space and this time. And, you know, just really giving thanks to life and really giving thanks to existence and all that is going on, that we have each other and that we're actually able to get in here. And even if it doesn't, if, it, if most of it doesn't make sense, we're here together. The sole purpose of this is for us to come together and to be here in this time. What I'm doing is I'm just saying stuff that has you at least there like, okay, I'll be here. But the most important part of this is, is us here because it's, it's showing an essence of something and that's creating something. And what that something is, is what you determine. It's just like you have all of the parts now to put the whole together. And so... I just wanted to say that when we touch and agree, what we're doing is, is we're making sure that there's always a space in infinity. That if ever you feel discouraged or you feel like you need anything that you prefer, which someone doesn't have to argue, argue with you about. We need more compassion, more love, more joy more happiness, more camaraderie, connectedness, abundance, all those things that nobody has to do. Are you sure you want this honor? <laughs> it's like, you don't even have to ask me that question. When you feel low on those things, this is an inexhaustible well of that. There are more of these. So I just wanted to take the moment as you know, we're, we're rounding into just the conclusion of today's build is these ancient secrets, they only have as much power as we feel. These ancient secrets only have as much power as we feel. Like if somebody doesn't know about these secrets, it's just like they're in a world where nothing exists. There is no magic. That world is a lie. It's not real. I'm not, I'm not the one to validate whether it's a lie or not. I don't validate whether truth is the truth or not. Truth validates itself. And I just have the option to whether I want to follow the truth or whether I want to live in lies. And I can see the whole process. I can see old bull L, bullheaded bull minotaur. You can see it in kids. I know everything and just wrecking the China house. <laughs> It's like everywhere you step, you break something. 
And then the penalties that come with that, that's hard knocks, right? The school of hard knocks. Knocks means night. So it's like that descent into the underworld of us as fish, which is souls or just eyes. Like notice how the eye, you see it. You see the symbol of the fish, right? Which is the yoni. You don't got to put the tail on it, but just the symbol of the fish is the same symbol as the eye. And then all of these lifetimes, like what is that saying? That saying that everything you've seen when you bought in the light as a tree through photosynthesis allowed you to build that chain that is the existence that you live with and that you call yourself. And that even when you perish, you'll be there talking to yourself. So what happened? <laughs> uh, I guess we died. Well, I guess you better turn on the lights then because you already know how to do that. And so again, if you feel like these folks, they, they got the whole cloud over the whole thing. You look like Charlie Brown with the cloud over him when he walking around. Light resplendent. Remember your power. A thunderer. You got ion power. Electric, an elect. The elephant knows where the burial ground is, knows where all of its essence is, knows where the access to its portal is. The strength and the virility of giving life. I want all of you to live. Here, eat, eat in abundance, grow, nurture yourself. Here's nature. Is it warm in there? Even a serpent crawl his ass on the rock and get heated up by the sun. <laughs> so it's like synergizing all of these dualistic components to realize the absolute truth of ourselves. They say this peacock, they use that as a symbol because when it spreads its wings open, there's eyes. And those eyes were the constellations. And those eyes were the planets. And it just, it was as a symbol, it was saying, this is just how beautiful it is. Now there's a whole antithesis. Oh, the peacock is Lucifer and he's, uh, and this and this, and he was prideful and blah, 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 blah. And this is, this is the, because that first, that first situation with that division that this that we talked about earlier, that first situation wasn't handled. So everything else that was perceived from there was not in unity. It wasn't united. See, that's where the world is right now. Everything it perceives, it's not in unity. It's not in united. It's in war. It's fighting against each other. Woman against man, patriarch versus matriarch, this versus that, white versus black. It's in war. It's not together. But that ain't the truth, though. It's just not the truth. And so even when you're riding with it, if you ride with it too long, you don't even realize that you've been swapped out to fakeness and falsehood. And it was most of the time done through your emotional ocean, just tugging on your, your planets, your organs, being played like a harp or a monochord. You see what I mean? Like the hypnosis of the liar. They, they, they keep the words. <laughs> the illusion in itself, light, to be able to bend light, to work with light codes, to read light. Your DNA is a light drive. So shoot, where do we get to the thing to read light drives at? I don't know, as Elon Musk. <laughs> That's Peter Thiel. I don't know. DNA light drives. Where are we at, though? We're sitting in here under this debt. When really we were already absolved. 
the son absolved us. So it's like, well, who am I trying to be like? The soul. Be your soul. Because when the whole thing popped off here on earth in the great war, there was only two religions after that. Those, they say, who worship the sun. And those that worship things that were, were, that were created versus the creator. So that was symbolic where Solomon is trying to convince Queen Sheba, who's a sun worshiper, that they had the truth. So now we're, they say, as time draws nigh, we're at this point now where it's like, okay, well, you see how it is. You've seen the demo. <laughs> don't be at home feeling like you don't got solutions. Oh, man, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. You have access to a light drive. Hopefully, this lets you understand the situation that's happening in the world, just how serious this is. This is good for us. It's going to make us stronger. It's going to make us see through the veil. The covering cherub's power is waning. <laughs> we can see things as they are. Then we can become adept or adult. Start taking care of these children. We end this predatory nature that is happening of something that just eats seeds, just eats the seeds, never gives them opportunity to grow. And we realize the power that it's going to take to do something like that. Like, I'm not gassing you up here. Realizing this power, starting with the womb. Men, you have a womb in your mind. Women, you have a womb in your stomach. Unite them inside of a being. Unite your mind with your, with your dantane. And so these processes and procedures, it's not always going to happen overnight. The intentions do, though, and they already produce results. But just remember that we're here in and outside of time, continuously assisting in this process of our growth, getting stronger in all this, getting very clear and aware, looking for the unity to where it all connects rather than just thinking that it's all broke, realizing that it's perfect, the real one, and learn the difference between the real one versus the fake or the replica. There's not a day that there's not some ancient symbol being used to represent something else to try to send another message across Stay grounded in your truth. Know your roots. All is self. Nothing can come, can come against you. You ain't seeing nothing but yourself. Be on point. Realize what's happening with the whole debt system. Like really take command of your finances and your power. If you've got some excess money hanging around, power yourself. Meaning if you don't have if you're already in a property that you own and it's not solar powered, get power from the sun. That's an energetic, that's symbolic. It's an energetic change to where you're pulling power from. But see, you may say, well, you know, my neighbors, <laughs> they have solar power. Doesn't seem like they're all that spiritual. I don't know if that's going to work. And man, if you don't quit comparing yourself to others, your math is perfect. When you add somebody else numbers in, you don't know a, a person's all that they don't know their number. How the hell you know all their numbers? So realize just how much you're really responsible for with yourself and you'll see it all. So remember inside, you'll find everything. You'll actually find us also. I trust that as we continue to go forward that we'll realize just in this, in this world that we're living in now, how we need to be on point. I wanted to say thank you so much to 
everyone who has been a part of this journey. It's been incredible. It's like the incredible journey going on on a planet that you may think no incredible journeys go on. And we are getting stronger. We've been through a lot. And what we're doing now is we're fortifying ourselves to endure everlasting. And that starts in your consciousness. It starts here in your heart. All the stuff that you need to have that going on, it starts in you. So every day that you feel like I'm, I'm so late, I can't work on myself. I got to go and work on the external. Remember, it happens in the internal, though. The other one's like a treadmill. I feel you, though. <laughs> but you got to get more time there. Wake up at 4 a.m. Get that two or three hours right where this, before the sun is coming through in the most peaceful times and work with that as quantum time. Don't give excuses. I just the kids and oh, my job. Uh, uh. And it's just like, don't play with these beings. They're all so many of them have already breached through the consciousness through characters in idolons, meaning different things we were watching when we were younger being triggered to us, suggesting how we should be, even though we see ourselves being a certain way and know that this ain't, this is not life to us. That's why we talked about before, you're like somebody could go to McDonald's, get McDonald's and literally eat, eat something that they know is killing them. We do it all the time. So again, being collective at this stage, knowing that you have friends everywhere, create your plan with others. Find those that are around you that are on the level also. You're not doing this by yourself. I will tell all those out there, man, share the message. It's a decade in. We're still alive. There's been a lot happening around us. You know, there, it does take some gumption to pull this off. I know I, I may make it look easy because it's been consecutively for 11, 12 years, but it's, man, you know how they show Buddy with the, the Gandalf or whatever, with the elements and, ah, oh, you, it, man, it'd be like that with all the energy and things that are moving around the space, but still staying in there and say, I don't care what examples I'm seeing. <laughs> this is how you got to be. Look, you know, when the monkey mind comes in and trying to shake you from your throne, it's like, look, man, I don't care what we're seeing out here. I've already found cracks in this matrix. For all I know, this could be delayed and being showed to me from another time. I'm not succumbing to thinking that it's all over or that we don't got this. In fact, I'm the only one in this, meaning that in your reality, in your spectrum, do you really know who everybody and everything is that's interacting with you? How are you even coming to conclusions? Just be aware that, man, for you right now inside of yourself, your lights are on, you're activating, and it's happening for you. And keep going on with that. Keep pursuing that. And I'm proof that no matter what else is going on around us, that that's always going to benefit you. So I want to say wholeness and balance vibration. I'm going to open it up. I've actually got everybody out of here at 930 this evening. There's more to this. There is more, but there's always more. What's most important is, is that we just get this opportunity co to connect and that our sovereignty, and especially from henceforth, we realize that our sovereignty is only compromised through accepting benefits. And while many of us have accepted benefits, we do need to start renegotiating and basically liquidating contracts. We need to basically get on that process to where we realize that, yeah, there is some real stuff going on behind the scenes. Even when you just be aware of that alone, you can see it even more clear and it prevents you from making more stupid decisions. Then you start lining up just perfection. So that way you can actually begin to come into alignment with yourself so that you can then inherit all your powers that are already there. The being was already powered up. Now you're in a space where the connection between you and that power is having to pierce through several envelopes. 
And this is why it's so important to demystify these mysteries. They've put basically an entire hell between us and the truth. If I could explain it just as clear as possible, that would be the statement. They've put an entire hell between us and the truth. So in order to get to, tr to truth, it seems like you have to go through hell. And what that is symbolically is that all of the entities and the powers that are really connected to not only our resurrection, this is the symbol of the serpent and resurrection, to also our ability to back down anything that is trying to harm us, that is the thunderer or the trident, like, yo, back up, for I light this whole thing up on you. You see what I mean? Let me give you a little idea of it and grumble something. Those powers and those ability, abilities have now been demonized and placed in the category as being the dark lords of the earth, etc. And that's for sure, because without that, then you would just be there with fear, thinking about when you're going to die. When all of this stuff, again, as far as power is concerned, is related to energies that are inside of you and powers and abilities that you have, including the covering cherub. And if you've been sitting back there for too long underneath a veil of an illusion that is not really you, then you have an opportunity to crack that egg. You see how the egg crack even has like a lightning bolt coming through it? to crack that egg and sunny side up that thing and get ready to get in with the ion power, right? And then from there, you can actually begin your manifestations in order for you to take control of your consciousness and get out of the depths or the deep, which is all of the ideas that somehow, whatever your name is, James Evans, Bomar III, whatever, is going to be dying and leaving and dividing, right? Die meaning two, that you're going to be dividing again. No, surely you should have learned the lesson. Arise in wholeness. So that's what we have today for us. I'm going to go ahead and unmute this thing. If you want to let the world know that you are here, I will actually mix up something really quick. Let me just hit it. Yeah, wholeness. Wholeness. <laughs> wholeness. Wholeness family. Thank you. Wholeness family. Wholeness. Yo, yo. Wholeness. Give it thanks for the powerful deal, no doubt. We love you. Wholeness. Wholeness family. Wholeness. All right, let it drop. He did it again. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So appreciate you. The galaxy. The galaxy. We give thanks on us. On this family. Though our hero's destiny oh, might be more in the stars above, you. the beginning of his journey was much more down to earth. Time changes space. Yes. Oh. Though the power of the people runs your power. power, it is pumped by the heart of an explorer. The galaxy. The galaxy. The galaxy. To your eyes, a hundred billion is light. But we're used to flow. <laughs> Mystery and a special mix of bio. Your awareness may be powerful enough to control all the dark instincts. Your instinct will be. Choose with the police is self-hatred when now we gonna move. Want to see the real power. 
Past the sci-fi movies, yeah, I'm talking love and honor. You can't show it by a top designer. A given now a dollar. You feel it when time is put yeah. and think of an ideal father. Real love is like a farmer. Give what is needed to succeed. The roots need food and water. These are things we have thought of. But the action is needed to bring the wisdom forward. My generation is making change, one that we must embrace. The old way is dying out. We see it in their faces. I don't think it's too much. I don't know what you think you're low, but we already made it. I am the sperm that came for that. I know I am the greatness. Life is looking to me. My goals, I'm going to chase it. Whew. Uh -huh. Fire, bro. Fire, fire. Give me thanks. Change your space. See, this black brown was standing on the bottom of the sea a million years ago. It could be the interior of a huge mountain. To your eyes, a hundred billion is light. But for you, it's not. Awareness may be powerful enough to control your instincts. Your instinct will be to remove your hand from the box. <laughs> <laughs>